Hello, today we are going to discuss on complications of sinusitis. Complications occur when there is progress of infection beyond the mucoperic osteo lining of paranasal sinuses to involve the bone and neighboring structures like orbit, intracranial cavity, or dentitions. It is when there is weak immune response of host like young children and immunocompromised individuals like diabetic, SIB, tuberculosis. It's when there is inadequate or inefficient treatment by a short course of antibiotics only, infection by highly virulent organisms like fungus or like strong bacteria, then abnormal mucosillary clearance when there is persistent blockage of the uh, sinus ostia. There are different routes of infection. Uh, they are by thin bones like lamina papyrusia through natural suture lines, through natural canal like infravertical canal, through retrograde thrombophlebitis through diploid veins of the skull, especially supravertical vein in the anterior aspect, uh, closely related roots of upper second premolar and first molar teeth. They have direct communication with the maxillary sinus. Then periarterial peri species of virserobin, they are also common causes for uh, taking out the infections. The complications can be classified into acute and chronic complications along with associated diseases. Acute complications are local complications like orbital, intracranial, bony, and dental will be describing later on. Then distant complications like toxic shock syndrome, which is also very not uncommon. Amongst chronic complications, mucosal and pyosal are common, and associated diseases like radius media, adenotonsillitis, and bronchiectasis when the infection spreads beyond the uh, nose to ear, throat, or towards the lungs or bronchus. Orbital complications, by the way, are the most common complications of sinusitis, especially from the ethmoid sinusitis. It was described by Chandler et al. in 1970. Uh, first is preceptal cellulitis, then orbital cellulitis without abscess, orbital cellulitis with extra or subperiosteal abscess, orbital cellulitis with intraperiosteal abscess, and cavernous sinus thrombosis. Intracranial complications can be classified into meningitis, encephalitis, extradural abscess, subdural abscess, intracerebral abscess cavern sinus thrombosis and sagittal sinus thrombosis. Uh, coming to bony complications like osteitis, osteomyelitis, perspective tumor is also a common complication. Then dental complications like dental abscess and oral fistula are also not uncommon. Coming to orbital complications, describing the complications, orbital complications are as already told that the commonest complications of sinusitis and young people at high risk because you know young children they have more of the ethmoid disease. So ethmoid, the infection can spread from its sinus to ethmoid sinus to its uh, orbit through lamina papyrusia. Around 85% of children or adults like uh, people are less than 20 years of age. Ethmoid sinus is the most commonly implicated sinus for complication followed by frontal sphenoid and the maxillary sinus. Left orbit is more commonly involved than the right. Exactly is unknown but uh, most of the congenital anomalies or the inflammations are more common on the left side of the body. It is postulated that so these are the simple uh, explanations of the different complications of uh, the orbital complications of sinusitis. We'll be describing details one, in one by one. So first is periceptal cellulitis. This is an inflammation which is external to orbital septum, so called preceptal. So patient presence with edema of the eyelids might be upper lid, lower lid, or both is occurring to different sinuses inflamed. And there is no tenderness no visual loss and no limitation of extraocular movement. This is the inflammation that just in the preceptal area. On clinical examination, you will see uh, this is swelling of the upper and lower eyelids and towards the medial side, basically due to ethmoid sinusitis because this is the area of the ethmoid sinus. So on CT scan, you can see this edema in the preceptal area. This is the orbital septum, this is the preceptal area and the, this is the preceptal cellulitis. This is the orbital septum and this is the preceptal cellulitis only. Second is the orbital cellulitis without abscess. There is cellulitis, but there is no abscess in the orbit. There is inflammation of adipose tissue deep to periorbital septum without suppuration. There is no post formation. There will be diffuse periorbital edema with erythema. There will be redness. There will be mild proptosis. And there will be no restriction of extraocular movement and no change in vision. So, up to this, there will be no change in vision. So, a uh, patient's vision will be all right. There will be just see this is the Orbital cellulitis without abscess, cellulitis of the orbit, there is red, red redness in the eyes in the uh, preceptal area. On CT scan, you can just see orbital cellulitis can be seen. This is the CT scan, okay? Then this is the picture to show diffuse orbital cellulitis with no abscess. Next is extraperiosteal abscess. Now the infection spreads in the extraperiosteal area from the 
uh, from the paradigm sciences. It is the most common form of herbal cell lysis, extraperiosteal abscess. It is localized extraperiosteal post-collection is there. There will be on examination there will be mild proptosis, restriction of extraocular movement, and visual uh, equity loss. So by extraperiosteal abscess there will be loss of some form of vision. Basically, color vision is affected first. With red and blue color blindness will be there. So this is the picture showing extraperiosteal abscess. This is the periosteum and the pus has been uh, present in the extraperiosteal area with minimal pressure to the soft tissues and the vital uh, the optic nerve. So minimal pressure. So that leads to some form of vision. Basically, color vision is affected at first. You can see this, this is the extraperiosteal abscess. The infection has spread from the ethmoid sinuses to the orbit, extraperiosteal part. Now comes herbal cellulitis with intraperiosteal. Now the infection spreads from the extraperiosteal to intraperiosteal area. So this is mild, there will be mild chemosis with edema of unknown type A. Proptosis will be severe, asymmetric and quadrantic. This is different. This is the important difference from cavern science thrombosis. You should know this. The severe, asymmetric and quadrantic proptosis is the feature of herbal cellulitis with intraperiosteal abscess. So this depends on different sinuses. Frontal sinus, as you know, is a superior aspect. So this is a downward and forward and lateral deviation. With more sinus is to forwards and lateral deviation. Forwards is, has to be common. The maxillary sinus leads to upwards and forwards. There will be concurrent and complete ophthalmoplasia and visual loss due to optic neuropathy up to 30% of cases uh, will be found. This is a picture typically intraperiosteal abscess. You can see here, uh, there is the inflammation has gone beyond the periosteum, intraperiosteal, and this is compressing on the optic nerve. So, patient will have some form of visual, again, visual loss, and there will be conjunctival chemosis. Okay, there will be exophthalmos, okay, eyelid displaced. So, this is the congestion of the eyes. Now comes the cavernous sinus trauma, which is the which is the one of the dangerous complication of sinusitis. The rapid onset and the active fever, there will be bilateral orbital pain and severe chemosis. This is the typical feature of cavernous sinus thrombosis to have bilateral uh, pathology. The bilateral absent fibular reflex, bilateral asymmetrical azeal proptosis will be there, and there will be sequential ophthalmoplegia starting from sixth nerve to third to fourth nerve. There will be papilledema with loss of vision. This is the important uh, finding in cavernous sinus thrombosis bilateral. The painful paresis of the B1 and B2 will be there. As in this is cavernous sinus, there is cavernous sinus thrombosis. There will be bilateral chemosis and proptosis seen in cavernous sinus thrombosis. There will be symmetrical proptosis, okay, and there will be bilateral conjunctival chemosis. How to differentiate cavernous sinus thrombosis from orbital abscess? Cavernous sinus thrombosis is bilateral condition. As you know, it presents bilaterally it is with axial proptosis symmetrical. You know, orbital abscess will be unilateral. There will be cavernous sinus thrombosis, rapid progression will be there, and orbital cell is a slow progression. Hectic fever is the feature of cavernous sinus thrombosis, and low grade fever is the feature of orbital cell Severe chemosis is the feature of cavernous sinus thrombosis, or so mild chemosis is the feature of orbital cell lysis. Paresis of B1 and B2 is there, and no, there is no paresthesia. Sequential ophthalmoplegia with 6th, 3rd, 4th nerve. The concurrent pan ophthalmoplegia is a feature of orbital cell lysis. A symmetrical axial proptosis uh, is the feature of cavernous sinus thrombosis and orbital abscess. There will be asymmetric quadrantic, quadrantic proptosis. How to evaluate orbital complications? Uh, this is important. First, ophthalmology consultation is to be uh, asked for if you suspect the complications of sinusitis. Look for edema of the eyelids. Displacement of the eyeball, proptosis, and restriction of ocular movement. They will, they, will, they will see for visual equity and color vision examination and fundoscopy for papilledema. CT scan of PNS, including orbit, coronal and axial cords are important just to see the site and extent of disease. Uh, River extension has been there. Uh, then, medical treatment is by broad spectrum IV antibiotics, high dose, like cefriaxone, metronidazole plus amikacin to be given, both gram-positive, gram-negative and anaerobic infections will be controlled by these uh, antibiotics. Inside is to decrease pain, topical or oral nasal decongestion, just uh, if ostia are blocked, just to open the ostia and open the pus to be drained. Then mucolytics like bromexin, ambroxol and graphenation can be given just to uh, break the thick mucus into a thin mucus and nasal saline irrigation just to uh, remove the thick mucus secretions. 
surgical treatment for sinusitis and for arbitrary complication is different along with the neurological complication is also different so frontal sinus acute sinusitis will do frontal sinus definition complications are usually uh, acute in origin so external frontal ethmoidectomy lens avart excision lens avart incision or functional endoscopic sinus surgery is a commonly performed surgery nowadays even for complications previously they used to tell that complications will not be managed by endoscopic sinus surgery but nowadays most of the complications are tackled by endoscopic sinus surgery functional endoscopic sinus surgery for arbitrary complications uh, we can do subperiosteal abscess drainage when there is subperiosteal abscess formation and orbital decompression is to be done when there is pus in the inside the orbit intercranial complications are usually they are not in our hand they are in the hands of neurosurgeons it's the second most common complication of sinusitis after orbital complications is most commonly seen in adolescents and young adults already told because diploic venous system is at its peak vascularity and their slightly immune response is weak so frontal sinus is most commonly implicated now in intercranial complications frontal sinus is the most commonly implicated in orbital complications ethmoid sinus is the most commonly implicated sinus followed by ethmoid sphenoid and the maxillary sinus common route of spread is through retrograde thrombophlebitis of via diploic vein of brichet which i already been told probably with the superior vertebral vein it has it doesn't have any venous plexus with this so intercranial complications might happen already told if they start from the meningitis extracellular abscess sub extracellular abscess subdural abscess brain abscess h so clinical features are patient uh, presents with fever deep seated headache nausea and projectile vomiting neck stiffness seizures altered sensorium and mood changes and lately patient might have bradycardia hypotension and stupor this frontal lobe abscess is a common finding on ct scan when the infection is infection is spread from the frontal uh, sinus to the brain okay this is seen in axial cords and the coronal cords you can see the abscess here in the frontal sinus uh, investigations and medical treatment basically neurosurgery consultation is to be given so this kind of pns of brain with contrast can be given and mri with contrast is investigation of choice because the, when the infection is towards the brain then mri is the good investigation but when the infection is uh, in the pernal sinuses auto orbit then ct scan of pns is uh, important investigation of choice hydrous blood spectrum iv antibiotics to be given along with safriaxone metronidazole for 4 to 6 weeks a long time steroids uh, the role of steroids is controversial can be given but as you know the infection is uh, there so infection might spread if you use steroids so it is still controversial role surgical treatment for sinuses so uh, frontal treatment again external frontal ethmoidectomy can be given and functional endoscopic sinus surgery for intercranial complications by neurosurgeon they can do borehole drainage for small abscesses and craniotomy for large brain abscesses so first the uh, treatment should be combined treatment come to mucosal of parietal sinuses it is defined as epithelium lined mucus filled sac filling the parietal sinus sinus that is capable of expansion is basically the sinus has to be uh, capable for expansion incidence of frontal sinus is most common around 65% of all cases of uh, mucosal occur in the frontal sinus ethmoid 25% maxillary 10% is spinoid rarely but frontoethmoid mucosal itself is a common entity frontoethmoid because the basically happens in both frontal and the ethmoid ethmoid sinuses etiology is chronic obstruction of sinus or stem with retention of normal sinus mucus within the sinus cavity or having the mucus retention cyst as which develops from obstruction of ducts of seromucinous glands within the sinus mucosa these are the two common theories of origin it will be cystic non tender swelling of over the inner canthus with excel crackling sensation on palpation a proboscis will be there in front of sinus it will be downward and forward and lateral if moid forwards and lateral and maxillary up and forward as already told so diplopia and restricted eyeball movement will be there along with frontal headache retro bridal pain or facial pain shall be there so this is the mucosal that you can see this is the frontal mucosal so usually frontal ethmoid mucosal this is the typical frontal mucosal that you can see in the entry aspect so investigations for mucosal are x-ray pns occipitomental view which is not commonly performed nowadays uh, you can see expanded frontal sinus loss of scalloped margins of the frontal sinus 
translucency test will be positive either the depression or erosion of the subarid layer is if if palpable over there CT scan is a good investigation of soil so it's a homogeneous smooth walled mass expanding the sinus with thinning of bone will be an enhancement on contrast if there is biosil so this is the front with moid mucosal you can see over here this is the mucosal you can just see the, the cyst okay which is the cyst there and is, it is lined by the epithelium and it there is a small periosteum over there so a small covering is there which gives rise to excel crackling on on palpation so there is proptosis you can see there is this a mucosal okay mucosal and this is the proptosis over here so this is the again in coronal cords you can see the front right point mucosal over here spin this is the spinoid mucosal small uh mucosal is give this is the spinoid sinus which can which i can see the widening of the expansion of spinoid sinus with the mucosal and the thinning of bone in the thinning of spinoid bone in both the sides so how to treat the mucosal first antibiotics to be given and nasal decongestion to be given they, they might help uh, this for inflammation to be controlled then external front ethmoidectomy by lens of arthritis approach can be given can be done endoscopic front ethmoid surgery or endoscopic decompression of the uh, cyst marsplasin and osteoplastic flap repair nowadays even we do uh, endoscopic sinus surgery for this of for the mucosils so the left ethmoid mucosal is the ethmoid mucosal is a middle terminate is the septum is the inferior terminate this is the mucosal you can see over here and this is the mucosal that you can see so drainage plus marsplasin can be done by endoscopic approach this is the endoscopic approach the drain and marsplasin and post op ct scan you can see coronal cords so this is this uh, is the mucos mucosal cavity okay, which is directly uh, joining with the with the nasal cavity so this is the this is the uh, post operative finding So frontal biosil plus fistula when there is uh, inflammation of the frontal sinus, then it will be biosil and fistula. This is the eye and this is the frontal biosil. Okay, you can see the biosil is the chronic complication. Then osteoplastic flap repair for frontal sinus mucosal is done. It's osteoplastic flap and just the uh, sinus is open and is drained. This is the mucosal of the frontal sinus. Going to parts of a tumor. Throat pores for tumor is the frontal sinus osteomyelitis after chronic sinusitis. Okay, so it, is, it was described by Percival Potter in 1760. It gives a fluxion swelling over forehead anteriorly, which may spread posteriorly, leading to subdural abscess. So it involves both the walls of the frontal sinus. So treatment is by six week course of broad spectrum IV antibiotics, long course, drainage of pus and debridement of the bone, and obliteration of frontal sinus by osteoplastic. Flap technique itself. It's a pus puffy tumor that you can see over here. This is the pus puffy tumor. Puffy tumor. Pus puffy tumor. Okay. So, oriental fistula is also uh, not an uncommon finding. It's a fistulous tract communicating between oral cavity and maxillary antrum. Treatment is done by closer by buccal mucosal advan advancement flap or palatal flap or by buccal fat pad flaps. So this is the um, you can see this is the hole over here okay you can see a hole this is the oriental fistula so on ct scan you can see a fistula tract over here this is the maxillary sinus this is the oriental fistula this is the oral cavity so treatment is by is a buccal mucosal advancement flap buccal mucosa has been advanced to the uh, hole okay to the sinus fistula tract and again buccal fat pad buccal pad Head pad is being manipulated onto the position. So this is the surgical surgical uh, picture of encoriental fistula. Going to last slide, toxic cell syndrome, which is rare, potentially fatal complication of sinusitis. It is a septicemia due to staphylococcus aureus or staphylococcus infection. Clinical features: it presents with fever, hypotension, skin rashes with disinflammation, toxic shock, multi-system failure. Treatment is by IV shift reaction, one gram three times a day, and Face and drainage of the pus from the sinuses. So once the sinus infection is controlled, then toxic cell syndrome should be controlled. Basically, is a systemic complication of sinusitis. Thank you so much. Please subscribe my my uh, YouTube channel, Dr. Krishna Koirala, for 
for the videos of the classes thank you